Hey yeah, everyone. So I'm really sorry about um, not streaming uh, Marvel Mondays last night, or Marvel Saturdays, I, I guess you would call it, since I moved it to Saturdays. Um, I meant to stream last night um, and, and do the whole Loki discussion, but, you know, as always, things happen and completely screw up my plans. <clears throat> so, yeah, that, that's why I didn't end up streaming yesterday. So I'm going to try to make up for it now by um, recording this video talking about, um, you know, this stuff regarding Loki um, today. Um, um, so actually, I, I meant to uh, post a video um, about it um, last week, but um, it wasn't until after I got done recording that video that I actually found out that um, for some reason my um, microphone was off the entire time because OBS is stupid and for some reason has my mic off as the default setting. So yeah, um, I'm gonna go uh, and, and do this discussion now. Um, like I said, I already recorded a video previously talking about Loki um, and because I really don't want to go over everything that I talked about in that video that I couldn't upload. Um, you know, I don't want to go over it all over again in detail, so I'm just going to go over everything that I already discussed briefly and only uh, mention things that um, caught my interest um, for the previous episodes. But uh, I will get in more detail when, when talking about the latest episode, which is uh, episode four. So, uh, so yeah, the show starts off, Loki, you know, so this is... the the show basically starts off um, during Avengers Endgame. You know, as you know, if you've seen that movie, the Avengers went back in time to recover the Infinity Stones. Um, they failed to recover the Tesseract, which is the Space Stone, um, because as uh, Tony Stark is securing the, the suitcase or briefcase, whatever, that contains the Tesseract, he gets knocked out by the Hulk. The Tesseract falls out of the suitcase. Loki picks it up and teleports away. At which point he ends up in the desert uh, in Mongolia, which, you know, then and there the TVA arrives and, um, uh, you know, basically takes him in for breaking the sacred timeline. And that's when he goes through the whole process of, you know, having, you know, to verify his existence and whatnot and, uh, you know, um, having explained to him what's going on uh, with, you know, the what the Time Variance Authority, the TVA, is, and what they're meant to do. So, so basically, he has it explained to him that, um, uh, you know, a long time ago, there was a, a multi-universal war that broke out, uh, and the timekeepers uh, stopped all of existence um, from coming to an end because, you know, all of existence was threatened by this multi-universal war. Um, so after that, the timekeepers created the Time Variance Authority to keep the sacred timeline in check and stop Nexus events from happening. That's what they call it when, you know, somebody does something that deviates from the timeline and, and thus causes the timeline to branch and, uh, you know, ultimately causes alternate realities to form. So yeah, that's what the TVA Time Variance Authority is uh, meant to do. Uh, supposedly, anyway. Um, you know, this is all propaganda, and, you know, we learn more about the TVA later on in the show's history and whatnot, so he has this explained to him. He's put on trial for uh, his, uh, you know, breaking the timeline, but uh, then another agent comes along, uh, Agent Mobius. Um, he wants to actually interrogate Loki himself, and, uh, you know, shows him, you know, his past and future misdeeds, um, and, you know, his history of hurting people. Excuse me. And then, uh, Loki, uh, escapes, um, and, uh, during his escape, he actually finds a drawer full of Infinity Stones, and, you know, basically comes to the realization that none of them work at the TVA, which allows, it causes him to grasp the, the full extent of, uh, you know, what the TVA really is, uh, because, you know, he gets a hold of the, the Tesseract again after having it confiscated from him when he's initially brought in, and he tries to use it, but can't, so, yeah. Um, the reason for that is because uh, in Marvel Comics, um, the Infinity Gems 
only work in the universe where they originate from. So, you know, yeah, it seems like the MCU is um, going by the same rules as the comics where, you know, you can only use the Infinity Stones from the same universe that the Infinity Stones come from. So, you know, that's why, you know, the TVA is able to basically, you know, hoard them all from different universes and whatnot and not to worry about things getting out of control or destroyed or anything like that. So, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, that, that's another thing that I uh, forgot to mention. Uh, during the explanation of how the Sacred Timeline works and everything, uh, I already mentioned that they said that Nexus events happen when um, somebody does something that they're not supposed to do and that causes a variation in the timeline. That is actually a connection to WandaVision because in WandaVision, if you remember, uh, one of the commercials uh, that happened in universe in WandaVision was for an antidepressant called Nexus. <laughs> now, at the time, um, we thought that this was maybe a reference to um, Wanda as a Nexus being or the Nexus of all realities. And it's very possible that it still is a reference to these things. But now that we've seen this show and had what Nexus events are explained to us, I'm thinking that what Wanda did in WandaVision was a Nexus event or she's about to create a Nexus event. So, I don't know. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll see what, what happens when Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness comes out. Um, it's probably going to give us more answers and, and details on that, um, at least. Uh, but at the moment, um, it, it, it's very hard for me to, to guess as, as to what the Nexus commercial still means, but I'm, I'm thinking it, it, it's referring to a Nexus event rather than the other two things I mentioned, although there, there's no reason to believe that it's not referring to all three, you know? So anyway, uh, Loki goes back to the time theater when he was being interrogated, uh, sees future revenge, and watches his own death, and that's when he decides to agree to help the TVA search for this variant that they're hunting, uh, because that's why Mobius wanted to interrogate Loki in the first place to ask for his help, and that's when he reveals that the variant that they're after is Loki himself. So yeah, they're, they're hunting after a variant of Loki, and, um, you know, there, there's, <laughs> honestly, there, there's actually really not much actually going on at, in, in most of these uh, first three episodes. Um, there's the second one, um, it involves the, the, the TVA going to a branch in, in the timeline in 1985, um, at like a renaissance fair and that's when the variants ambushes the TVA agents that went there. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, the, the variants is stealing reset chargers from the TVA um, after um, attacking them at, at the scene of where, where they sense a disturbance to the timeline. And uh, so, you know, this is just another one of those attacks and uh, the variants uh, kidnaps one of the, the TVA agents along with stealing a reset charge this time and so you know they go to, to the scene of the attack Loki and, and some other agents and Mobius and um, you know Loki basically just stalls for time um, you know because they, they have to reset the timeline before the, the branch hits red line is what they call it and that's from what I understand, red line is when um, a branch in the timeline officially becomes its own separate universe or reality. So, you know, that's basically what the TVA is trying to do. They're, they're trying to cre prevent all uh, branches in the timeline from creating, from becoming their own universe and whatnot. So, you know, after investigating the, the latest scene of attack from uh, the variant that they're after, um, Loki basically figures out that um, the variant is hiding in apocalypses because um, what you do 
uh, in, in an apocalypse doesn't matter because if everything is going, if everyone is going to die and everything is going to be destroyed, then it won't create a variance in the timeline because again, everything is gonna, everybody's gonna die, everything is gonna be destroyed. So, so yeah, that that's basically how he figures out that that's where the variance is hiding. So. Um, they're able to, to figure out where the variance is hiding because of uh, something that was left behind by the variance in another uh, time period um, during another attack. Um, it's this thing, it's this candy called Kablooey Bubblegum. And um, something that I want to mention here is that um, the guy on the Kablooey Bubblegum looks like Nightmare, a, a villain from the comics. And Nightmare has been rumored to be uh, the villain for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness for a while now. Uh, but I actually went back and looked at the the timeline for the original release schedule for Phase 4 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies, and originally, Loki was supposed to come out after Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. So I doubt that this is meant to be uh, some kind of act of foreshadowing uh, for Nightmare to eventually appear, uh, but I still think that if Nightmare does turn out to be um, the villain in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, then um, th there is some kind of a connection there. That's assuming, you know, that it is Nightmare who's going to be in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, and assuming that he's going to have a comic accurate appearance. So, you know, that that's just one theory that I have. But yeah, anyway, um, they figure out that the variant is currently located at a, an apocalypse in 2050 Alabama where a hurricane is about to hit and kill everyone. So uh, that's where they go to confront this uh, variant of Loki. And um, the variant is actually revealed to be a female version of Loki. And the reason why she went around uh, stealing reset chargers from various... Uh, TVA agents is because uh, she actually wanted to send them to various points of the past and set them off, and this creates multiple branches all over the timeline, everywhere. The TVA is freaking out, like code red, all hands on deck, you know, because I assume what they're what they're doing is they're going to you know moments before the, the reset chargers go off, so that way you know it doesn't create a branch in the branches in the timeline uh, to begin with. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then Loki uh, goes after um, uh, <laughs> the, the variants uh, that they were after um, as she walks through um, a, a time doorway created by a temp pad that she has. So, um, yeah, the, the ending of this episode was was real real big for me like like this is where the, the show peaked for me early on because it's like oh shit this is going to be what causes uh, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness uh, like <laughs> this is one of those episode endings that makes me want to see the, the next episode right away like I needed to have seen the next episode already it got me so excited um, but uh the next episode um, came, and uh, we saw that um, the the female variants of Loki came came. Uh, she arrived at the TVA to to, to find the timekeepers because the, the TVA agents that kidnapped her previously had um told her where they were apparently, and um, you know Loki chased after her, and. Um, Ultimately, they, they needed to escape to another time period because they, they end up getting captured by, by the TVA. So the only way for them to escape was through a, a time gate from the Tempad. And they arrive on a moon called Lamentus One at, in the year 2077, where um, the, the, the moon is about to be destroyed by a planet because uh, it's uh, colliding into it. Um, so they've only got a short amount of time to, to get out of there before um, it happens, but the temp pad runs out of power, so they basically, you know, 
they're basically forced to work together to find a power source to recharge the tempad so they can get out of there before the moon is destroyed. So, you know, eventually they end up, uh, you know, on a train called the Ark, basically, and um, <laughs> that's, you know, they have this conversation where they get to know each other, so this episode basically acts as a, a means of properly introducing the female variants of Loki, who his name we learn is Sylvie, um, you know, so this this episode is basically acting as her introduction and uh, us getting to know her and whatnot. Now, Sylvie is uh, actually named after a, a character from the comics called Sylvie Lushton, uh, who, you know, she, she joined the, the Avengers, one of the Avengers teams in the comics. She named herself after the Thor villain Enchantress, um, and after some time, you know, the real Enchantress found out that, that Sylvie was using her name, so she banished her to the Ten Realms and said, if you can survive the Ten Realms, then I'll give you the right to use my name. And we haven't heard from her since, so she's probably dead. Or maybe the fact that we're seeing Sylvie in the MCU now means that she might make a surprise return in the comics. I don't know, but in any event, um, I'm not really sure... So, so basically, <laughs> at first I thought that this variant of Loki was supposed to be Lady Loki and or Enchantress, but her name is Sylvie, <laughs> which is an entirely different character, uh, who shares a name with the Enchantress. So, you know, it could be Lady Loki, it could be Enchantress, it could be Sylvie, but I'm thinking since this is the MCU we're talking about, it's most likely an amalgamation of all three characters, because... Uh, you know, they, they, they've done this before, where, you know, Ego was an amalgamation of different characters, Hela was an amalgamation of different characters, like, they're still their characters, but they have elements of other characters as well, and not just straight adaptations of the characters that they're supposed to be, so I'm guessing that that's what's going on w w with Sylvie here. Um, so, um... So there's a fight scene that breaks out on the train uh, because uh, after Loki and Sylvie uh, have, a, have the conversation where they get to know each other, um, <clears throat> he gets drunk and starts singing a song on a train and he's not wearing his disguise anymore. So, um, you know, that blows their cover and causes them uh, to have to defend themselves on the train and Loki actually gets thrown out of the window on the train and because he still has the tempad, Sylvie chases after him, and uh, that's when they find out that um, the tempad is broken, so basically the only way off the, the, the moon is to hijack the train again and, and get off, because, um, yeah, that there's no other means of escape. Um, you know, what Sylvie says is that um, the train never leaves because it gets destroyed, but... Loki thinks that if they hijack the train, um, that they'll be able to escape before the planet gets destroyed, hence why they're trying to hijack it. Uh, and uh, she also, on the way there, Sylvie refers to the TVA as fascists and uh, tells Loki that everybody who works for the TVA is a variant themselves. And uh, <clears throat> this is... Uh, you know, this base more or less acts as the basis for how events play out uh, in the next episode. So, you know, Loki and Sylvie try to get to the Ark, but it gets destroyed before they even arrive there, so they never even have a chance to enact Loki's plan. Um, so they're basically just, you know, waiting out their last moments before uh, the moon gets destroyed. But that's when... Uh, this is uh, the next episode, by the way. The, the third episode ends with the Ark getting destroyed before they can get on. And the fourth episode starts with them, you know, talking to each other uh, before the moon gets destroyed. <clears throat> the moon, of course, being momentous. Um, but then um, a spike in the timeline happens at the moment um, where uh, Loki and Sylvie are, and that's how the TVA is able to locate them and bring them in. And, uh, which, you know, honestly, uh, you know, I said this in the video that I couldn't upload, that, uh, that that was basically the only way that they were going to be able to get out of that situation at that point. 
that TVA finds them and apprehends them, <laughs> and that's how they survive. You know, there was no other way for them to get out of that situation. Uh, I just didn't expect um, them to find them because Loki and Sylvie create a nexus event. Like that, that part I didn't expect. So, um, so yeah, they bring them in. You know, they're you know, well Loki's not interrogated right away exactly. Instead, uh, what Mobius does at first is uh, put him in a time loop from a moment in his past where uh, he, Sif uh, gets mad at him for, for cutting off her hair and uh, she punches him and tells him that he deserves to be alone and he always will be. Uh, that's a thing that, that comes from actual Norse mythology, by the way. Um, so yeah, Mobius puts him in a time loop of that moment in his life. Um, while he uh, talks to the judge who learns name. I, I don't know if this was mentioned in, in, in other episodes, but the judge's name uh, in this show is Ravona Rensler, which I'll get to that later. But uh, yeah, while Loki is in the time loop, uh, Mobius... No, wait, no, wait, no. Actually, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Uh, let me explain something else that, that happens uh, earlier in the episode. The episode doesn't actually start with, um, you know, Lamentis uh, about to be destroyed from the planet that's colliding into it. Um, we actually get a flashback of um, Sylvie from her childhood when she's just playing with toys on Asgard and then the TVA comes in and says she's in violation of the sacred timeline. But uh, she manages to escape from the TVA before being put before the judge, who is actually a different judge from the one we've seen in the show so far. We actually learn uh, from this uh, opening scene that the judge, Ravona Renslayer, who's the judge that we've been seeing up to this point, wasn't always the judge. She used to be uh, another one of these field agents for the TVA. Um, and so, so yeah, that, that's why um, this case is so important to uh, the current judge, Renslayer, uh, because she's more or less been chasing after this variance of Loki for, for a very long time at, at the TVA, and, um, you know, uh, I'm guessing that, that Sylvie herself also has some kind of personal grudge against this, uh, against the judge, uh, uh, for that reason as well. Um, at, at, well, the whole TVA, really, but, but uh, her in particular, because she's one of the agents who kidnapped her and destroyed her timeline. So, um... So yeah, um, after the time loop of punishment, um, Mobius interrogates Loki again, and uh, Loki just basically tells Mobius that everybody at the TVA is a variant. And uh, Mobius pretends to not believe Loki, but actually when he goes to meet with Renslayer, he... Uh, mm. oh, excuse me. He... Uh, steals her temp pad and uses it to uh, watch uh, the interrogation of one of their agents, C-20, who Renslayer told Mobius uh, died uh, after being rescued. Uh, he, so he, he takes her temp pad and, and watches uh, C-20's uh, interrogation, and she uh, basically confirms what Loki said about um, everybody at the TVA being um, variants. Because Sylvie has, she, she can mind control people by more or less possessing them, but the way she does it is by uh, accessing the, the memories. And uh, that's how um, she was able to get information um, from C-20 about where the timekeepers were. Um, and she also um, uh, mind controlled um, B-15 uh, in episode two as well. Um, so at this point, you know, B-15 wants to um, learn more about what happens to her while Sylvie was in her head and basically takes her back to, um, you know, where they met um, uh, in, back in episode two, the, the hurricane apocalypse. And uh, she she accesses uh, B-15's mind again and, and, you know, makes her realize that she had a life before the TVA. And of course, you know, when Mobius finds out about what happens to C-20, he 
he wants to learn more about his life uh, before uh, the TVA as well. Uh, and then um, he goes to take Loki out of his time loop again, and that's when Renslayer found out that that Mobius took her temp pad and uh, confronts him about it, and basically Mobius gets pruned. And uh, so after that, um, Loki and Sylvie are taken directly to the timekeepers themselves. Um, <laughs> and uh, I actually can un un understand what, what they were saying, uh, really. Like, I I'm not really sure how um, the, the editors or, or the people who, who were working on the show or the test audience or whatever, like, I don't know why nobody said, you know, we can't really understand what these guys are saying. Um, can you, like, adjust the voice modulation or, or whatever to make them more understandable? Uh, the second time I watched the episode, I could understand what they were saying a little bit better, but I still couldn't understand everything. But, uh, you know, the, the dialogue for the most part is not important, but we'll get into um, what is important later on. So, you know, Loki and Sylvia are brought before the timekeepers. Um, B-15, who had gone missing after um, talking to Sylvie uh, about her past and whatnot, um, she actually comes back and frees Loki and Sylvie and hands them uh, a, pr a pruning rod, I guess is what it's called, um, you know, for when, when they prune someone. So, so yeah, a fight scene breaks out and, uh, you know, a after it's over... Um, Sylvie cuts off the head of one of the timekeepers, and that's when they find out that they're robots. And, um, so basically, the timekeepers aren't real. And, um, that begs the question, obviously, of, of who the timekeepers, um, actually are, or, or rather, um, who created the TVA. Excuse me. And, uh, excuse me. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, um, I'm guessing Loki is trying to tell, uh, Sylvie that, 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 that he loves her, but before he can, uh, muster the courage to say it, he gets pruned by, um, uh, Renslayer, the judge, um, and that's when, uh, Sylvie, uh, gets the upper hand on her and, and tells her that, that she's going to tell him everything. And in a mid credit scene, which I did not expect one to happen in episode four, um, but we actually see that getting pruned doesn't mean you die. You just get sent somewhere else. And um, uh, where Loki finds out where he is, uh, he basically is confronted with other Loki variants. <laughs> so we've got Black Loki, Classic Loki, Kid Loki, and Alligator Loki? <laughs> I'm not really sure if it's uh, supposed to be Kid Loki's pet or an actual alligator variant of Loki, but I I'm pretty sure it, it is uh, another variant of Loki that's an alligator because it's wearing the same kind of headwear as uh, the other Loki variants are. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, um, th there's actually a lot more going on here than, than in the other episodes, so there's actually a lot for me to talk about here. Okay, so... Um, so when, um, Loki and Sylvie are, are on their way to be presented to the timekeepers so they can oversee their deletion, um, Sylvie asks Riona Renslayer, the judge, um, what her nexus event was, you know, like, like, what did she do that, uh, caused such a, a branch in the timeline that they, they needed to erase her from existence, and Renslayer says that she doesn't remember I'm thinking either she's lying or she had her memories erased because the reason why she, she needed to be deleted um, needed to be kept secret for some reason. Or either that or she was never told in the first place. Um, so I mentioned before that uh, I had a hard time understanding the timekeepers uh, when they spoke uh, in that scene. Um, you know, when, when, when Loki and Sylvie are being presented to them. For, for the most part, uh, I looked it up, and honestly, <laughs> the dialogue isn't really all that important, except for uh, the last bit of it, um, just before one of them gets their head chopped off. Uh, after the fight scene breaks out uh, in front of the timekeepers and, and, that, and that fight is over, uh, one of the timekeepers says, You're a child of the timekeepers too, Sylvie. 
we can talk. And that's when she cuts off the head of mm -hmm. one of the timekeepers and they find out that the timekeepers are actually just androids. Uh, and uh, as she's uh, walking up to the head of the timekeeper that, that she just cut off, um, we hear another voice in the room say, see you soon. So I'm thinking what this means is just because the timekeepers that we saw in episode four were fake doesn't mean that the timekeepers themselves are fake. They probably actually exist, just not at the TVA itself, which to me makes sense because why would the timekeepers make themselves so vulnerable as to actually be at the place that they created to maintain the timeline? You know what I mean? So, um, and, and another thing is, too, is that, um, you know, if they're beings that are so powerful that they're able to untangle the timeline and, and then create, you know, this organization that um, is meant to maintain the timeline that they helped straighten out, you know, wouldn't they be powerful enough to hold off a pair of Lokis as well? You know, so it's possible that they exist, just not at the TVA but it's also possible that they don't exist and were created by someone else, you know, just like the TVA itself. Now, if you ask me, I think that Kanga Conqueror is the one who created the Timekeepers if they are fake. Uh, and because, so Kanga Conqueror is, is like one of the Aveng Avengers' most famous uh, villains. He's a time traveler who's had many different uh, variants of himself, you know, all throughout, uh, you know, the history of, of Marvel Comics and whatnot. Like, he's also been known as Ramatut, and he's also been known as Mortis, and various other identities. Uh, so, we know that Kang the Conqueror is going to be the villain in Ant-Man and the Wasp's Quantum Mania. So, I'm thinking that this entire show is a built-up to, you know, Kang the Conqueror's debut in the MCU, which is going to be in Ant-Man the Wasp Quantum Mania. And uh, since Kang the Conqueror is also a Fantastic Four villain, since, you know, Kang the Conqueror is Nathaniel Richards, who is the father of Reed Richards, aka Mr. Fantastic. So it's not just a build up to Ant Man and the Wasp 3, or Ant Man 3, whatever you want to call it, but ultimately the Fantastic Four as well. So, yeah. Very excited to see what's going to happen in episode 5, and of course, to see how uh, Loki ends. Um, I'm pretty sure that, that that scene of President Loki from the trailers is uh, going to be in the last episode for sure. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll be very surprised if that scene doesn't happen, if it happens in the next episode rather than the last one. Uh, and another reason to, to believe that it's Kang the Conqueror who's behind everything here... Um, is because Ravona Renslayer, who I keep mentioning is the judge uh, that, that we've seen in the show, uh, she is a love interest of Kang the Conqueror in the comics. So, so yeah, everything points to Kang at this point. I, I'm pretty sure, you know, it's going to be him who, who's going to be revealed to be behind everything. I don't think we're going to see him uh, in the show exactly. Just, you know more or less strongly implied that it's him or hinting at him and then he'll make his proper debut in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Main. Now, uh, if you ask me, uh, so we, we, we see in, in, in the mid-credits scene uh, at the end of the episode um, that uh, pruning or getting deleted doesn't kill you. you. You just get sent to another place. And I'm thinking what this place is, is more or less a, a, a time prison for where all variants and things that get destroyed by um, reset chargers are sent, you know, so, so they basically can't interact with or interfere with um, the sacred timeline. That, that's, that's another thing, too. Um, since the TVA is, is made up of variants and the timekeepers are not real, uh, I'm also thinking that all this stuff about the sacred timeline and whatever, I'm thinking that's all made up as well. So, uh, so anyway, um, I'm thinking that this, so I'm thinking that, you know, when something gets deleted, it gets sent to this place where Loki is now, and it's meant to act as a time prison for all the variants that the 
TV8 rooms and whatnot. And I'm thinking that what this place actually is, is the nexus of all realities, which I mentioned before. In the comics, the nexus of all realities is this cross interdimensional gateway that acts as a means of, you know, it connects to all of the, the realities that do exist, can exist, and, and whatever, including realities in between realities, um, as confusing as that might sound. But, but yeah, since it's this intersectional, uh, interdimensional gateway that, that acts as a connection between all realities, uh, it would make sense for a place like that to be uh, a, a time prison, so to speak, for all the variants that the TBA deletes. So that's probably, you know, what it means to, to, to be reset um, whenever the TVA refers to that anytime they mention it in the show. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> you know, everything that that, that happens uh, in, in episode four um, and, and, and especially that, that mid credit scene, it's got me very much looking forward to what's going to happen um, in the next episode, as well as other movies and shows down the line. Oh, excuse me. Um, you know, like with episode two, the, the show has peaked again for me um, with episode four. You know, like, like I really want to see episode five right now. Like, I need to be seeing it right now. Like, I need to already be watching episode five, like, right now. But, um, yeah, we'll, we'll get to, to, to see episode five soon since it's coming out Wednesday. And also... Uh, Black Widow is coming out this Friday, I, I believe it is. So we got two things that we'll get to talk about uh, on Marvel Saturdays, um, assuming that I actually do stream on Saturday. So, yeah, hopefully um, we'll actually be able to do that. And uh, I'm very much looking forward to, to talking about both Loki Episode 5 and uh, Black Widow. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you all for watching. Uh, Again, I, I very much apologize for for not streaming yesterday. Uh, I'm doing my very best to um, make sure that, that, that I'll actually hold a live discussion on, on Saturday. Um, and so, uh, but like I, as I mentioned before, um, if I if I end up not doing it, uh, if I don't do a live stream, I'll, I'll make a video like like how I did today. Um, so. Yeah, you'll, you'll still get to hear my, my, my thoughts on what uh, um, what's going on with these shows and movies. So, yeah, anyway, thank you all for watching. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Uh, don't forget to share the videos if you like them. Be sure to make other people aware of my existence because that's the best way uh, to help my channel grow if you want to help support me more than anything else. So, yeah, uh, thank you all for watching. I hope to see you Saturday for real this time. And, uh... Yeah, take care, everyone. See you hopefully on Saturday.